How far has enduro mountain biking progressed in the last 15 years? And what's driven that progression? Is it the riders, the racers, the terrain? And how have the bikes risen to the challenges of enduro mountain bike racing? Well, thanks to Orbea, we're gonna take a look back at some enduro history. I think a big part of enduro mountain biking has its history in the sort of rides that a lot of us like doing. A fairly leisurely pace up the hill with a bit of chat, a bit of BS, catch your breath, and then thrash your way back down the hill as fast as you can. And repeat that as many times as you can until you're exhausted. But Enduro actually became a race format in the early 2000s in the mountains of France before quickly spreading to Italy. In 2008, we saw the first of the famous Italian super Enduro races. And actually the brains of those first races in France and Italy went on with a few other moves and shakers of the mountain bike industry to start the Enduro World Series in 2013. Still untimed on the ascents, but a schedule to adhere to, then race down technically and physically challenging trails. The more trails are better, and not a finely curated racetrack that's inspected every inch and every line considered. No, this is more raw than that. The riders have to use instinct and skill to race as fast as they can down trails they normally have only ridden once before. Enduro racing is much more than just the EWS. There's amateur offerings, qualifier series, Big stage races have been like the Trans-Provence or the Andes Pacifico, and many countries have really strong national series as well. The fastest racers, well, the French are particularly fast, particularly the French women, actually, but great riders come from the USA, Canada, and Australia as well, right there too. Mountain biking as a whole is still quite an infant when it comes to a lot of sports, but enduro is the newest race format of the lot. Riders have had to adapt really quickly, but so have the bikes and the equipment. Enduro bikes have to be pedaled over a serious amount of miles and meters of elevation. Yes, sometimes with the help of a ski lift, but not always. And then they're only judged on their ability to descend, get a good time down the hill. It means that arguably enduro bikes, their, their development has accelerated faster than other types of mountain bike. Just look at the trails here in Ludenville. That's one of the stages. It's about a thousand meter drop, super fast, wide open French piece. And the riders have to pedal back up the hill and ride down some super tech, muddy, steep woods. I was there at 2013 at the first ever EWS race at Punta Rala, and I'd ridden and raced for the best part of 20 years already. I talk about feeling like an absolute beginner again. The bike I was on, well, it was 27.5. Most people were, except for Tracy Mosey. She was riding 29er, and she won the race. It almost looked like bikes were cobbled together a little bit. Geometry is all over the place. Trail bikes, but with longer forks, like I say, 27.5 wheels. Drop a post with external cables looping around and going in. Some people were still running two by chain rings. So everything looks just a bit different. But the trails progressed. EWS takes mountain bike races to some of the toughest mountain bike terrain ever, like this steep, super slick chute here in France. Riders had to really push themselves and their bikes to the limits, while sometimes pedaling up to 60 kilometers a day, thousands of meters of elevation gain. But nowadays, EWS races can be up to 5,000 meters of descending in a day. The machines have got to be capable of hammering down the hills and efficient enough to pedal back up. Machinery like the brand new 2022 Orbea Rallon. It's 
stop breaking news if you want to win yourself a brand new Orbea Rallon. Stay tuned for later in the video to find out how. But before we get into that, let's take a look back at the history of the Rallon. It started in 2003, the early days of those epic rides when it was all about smashing the descents. But it really took a leap forward with the R5 version in 2018 with the progressive geometry, big travel, that asymmetric look. Uh, 29er wheels, and whilst this R6 may look like a similar silhouette, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but there are some significant changes. Geometries have evolved. It's lower, longer, and slacker. The reach grows by 30 millimeters on the large frame. The chain stays by five millimeters, and the bottom bracket is three mil lower. Orbea have uh, called a key feature of this bike steep and deep. You can see how the top tube has been slammed on this bike, meaning that riders can really buy a bike on the reach, on the length of the bike, rather than the actual size, because it's low enough for you know, all riders to use. Also, you can see how uh, straight that seat tube is. So you've got a massive uh, insertion length for that post, meaning that you can run super big droppers to get that saddle slammed out of the way. Also, the shorter riders on, uh, can run a smaller drop post if they wish, but most riders can run a 200 mil drop post on this bike. The Rallon is 160 millimeters travel with 170 mil up front. It's a 29er, but there is a mullet option. You can see on the linkage here, you've got a flip chip, so you can run it in two different ways, low or lower. It comes chipped as lower, so nice and low BB and slack. You can always flip that around if you want to raise a BB for maybe some technical pedaling sections. The bike also, interestingly, ships with another linkage so that you can run a 27.5 wheel on the back. So that's a really cool option. It comes with the bearings pressed in already. So this could be an option if you want to just buy another wheel. So you've got both options, 29er and a mullet setup. For maybe, you know, for a bike park riding, throwing the bike around in the air, you might fancy switching to the smaller back wheel. The Orbea Mayo program, basically their custom program, gives you over a million different combinations for this bike as well. So you can choose your wheels, 29 or mallet, coil shock, choose your components, choose your paints, your decals, the list goes on. Interestingly, Orbea went with their OMR carbon for this frame. So compare that to their OMX, which is their highest end carbon. OMR is actually the strongest construction. And while stiff and light can be good, uh, the riders, especially the pros, don't want like a really jarring, harsh ride. So they tested this all just so that the stopwatch agreed with what the riders were feeling. So they're getting some compliance with that balance of stiffness as well. The frame also features a locker internal storage compartment, a tool in the main pivot and a rear axle six millimeter Allen key with a valve core tightener. It's a silent ride with down tube protection, chainstay protection and cable grommets into the frame with new internal routing. Fully sealed bearings keep the tedious job of swapping them to the bare minimum. Yes, we've teamed up with Orbea to give away a fully Mayo customized Orbea. Click on the link in the description down below or hit that pinned comment. Get creative, design your own Orbea Rallon. Using the Mayo, you can pick colors, decals, components. Follow that link, enter, and hopefully we'll be giving that bike away to you. We'll be announcing the winner in the next three weeks on the Dirt Shed Show. So there's a look at the history of enduro racing. Nice to see how far it's developed and see how far the bikes have come. And very nice to take a look at the brand new Orbea Rallon and take it for a spin as well. Let us know in the comments down below what you think is next for enduro and for the bikes. Give us a thumbs up.